All right, back at it here for our next unit. And our next unit deals with solutions. It's actually chapter 16. And so solutions, uh, and obviously you can see a very simple solution, um, a picture of some sugar or salt in water, salt water. Very simple solution, uh, and we're gonna describe those as I go through. So, first of all, mixtures. We need to know what a mixture is. We have two substances not chemically combined. So we're not chemically having a reaction going forward, but rather just a blend of substances. Now there are two types. We have heterogeneous solutions, or excuse me, heterogeneous mixtures, and these are differences that are visible. A uh, heterogeneous mixture is trail mix or, or garden salad or um, sand in water. It doesn't dissolve, so it sinks to the bottom. Those are hetero, uh, heterogeneous mixtures. They are not solutions. Solutions would be homogeneous or homogeneous mixtures. Mixtures are the same throughout. So Kool-Aid, where you've got the sugar and the uh, coloring, I guess you could say, in the water. Uh, that's a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture. It is considered a solution. So those are your mixtures. And what are and properties of solutions? A solution is a homogeneous mixture of one or more things dissolved, solute, in something else, solvent. And I'm going to describe those terms a little bit more on this slide as well. But So that's what a solution is. Uh, some properties. The particles are very small. Again, usually they are uh, dissolved where you can't, you, they're homogeneous, you can't see, so they are interchanged and, inter, and they're through the entire so, the, so, the mixture. Uh, they're evenly distributed throughout and they will not separate under constant condi conditions. Yeah, we know that some solutions, if you leave them out um, without uh, a cover or whatever it might be, say you have some salt water and you leave that open to the atmosphere and let it evaporate, you'll see some salt on the bottom of your, your beaker. It's separated into the gaseous water molecules as they evaporate and the salt on the bottom. But under constant conditions in your you know, an enclosed container, they won't separate. Uh, so those are some properties. And here are those two, two terms that you really need to be aware of for this unit. Solute is the substance that's being dissolved. Solvent is doing the dissolving. So it's as simple as if I have my water, okay, and I have some crystals of something, whatever that crystal is, okay, let's say it's salt, NaCl, the solvent is the water, the solute, whoops, I would have liked to have gone red here, solute is the salt, the substance being dissolved. Very important to recognize these properties, okay? So that's quickly just a little information, a little beginning part to this unit. Uh, the next slide just talks about what might affect solution formation. So first of all, temperature. In solids and liquids, if you increase the temperature, the solution formation will increase as well. Sugar, hot tea, and cold tea, or coffee for that matter. If you go to, around this area, Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, you order your, your coffee with uh, sugar. Um, in a hot coffee, they'll put some sugar, stir it all up, whatever, drink it. You probably don't have any coffee on the bottom of the cup when you're done. In cold coffee or iced coffee, I notice whenever I get an iced coffee, I get the same thing, a regular cream and a sugar, uh, that there's a ton of sugar on the bottom of it while I'm drinking. While I'm drinking, it's all crystalline. I drink it, it's gritty. I don't think the people at Dunkin' Donuts are putting tons and tons and tons of sugar. They might be, but I don't think that they are. It's just that the sugar is not dissolving, okay, because it's colder. So what Dunkin' should do, if you really want to, or if you make your own hot coffee uh, or hot tea, <coughs> excuse me, iced coffee or iced tea, dissolve the sugar in it first while it's warm and then ice it. That's what I do when I make... Um, iced tea, homemade iced tea, I, I heat up the water, use my tea bags in the hot water, it allows it to dissolve a lot easier, a lot quicker, put sugar in it right there while it'll dissolve, and then cool it, pour it over ice, and then I have my, 
<coughs> excuse me, my sweet tea. Um, so temperature and how it uh, how's it affected or how it affects solution formation. In gases, it's the opposite. Cold soda versus warm soda. Soda is gas dissolved in a solution, in a solvent. Gas, the solvent, a uh, solute in the solvent water. So you've got water and you have carbon dioxide, carbonated bubbles going in. This is your solute versus the solvent. I've got a soda stream at home. I just use a little bzz and put some carbon dioxide in there. That's the, the solute that's getting dissolved into my solvent. Cold soda, the bubbles will stay longer. That carbon dioxide stays in solution or you can get more of it than in warm soda. Warm soda goes flat a lot quicker because again, it's opposite than solids and liquids. Increasing your temperature will increase solution formation in solids and liquids, yet in gases it's opposite. If you increase the temperature, it doesn't allow solution formation as easily. All right, so those are the first few things. I've got a little bit more on this slide. Um, I'm out as well. Let me go ahead and do that right now. Um, so that's temperature. The next is agitation, is stirring or shaking. In solids and liquids, you increase the agitation, you increase the solution formation. Sugar and stirred tea versus sugar and unstirred tea. If you have your tea and you pour your sugar into either, uh, or into a, into your uh, solvent, your, your, your tea, stir it up is going to dissolve it quicker. Why? That's because the molecules are banging up against those solute crystals more and more often. It breaks them on down. In gases, again, it's the opposite. You shake up a can of soda, the bubbles will come out. And the last um, uh, solution formation effect is surface area. If you increase the surface area of the solute, you increase the solution formation. Sugar cubes versus granulated sugar. If you take a sugar cube, okay, its surface area is, of course, just the part that's on the outside. If you were to put that into some liquid, okay, it's only going to dissolve on the surface. If I take a hammer to that thing, let me draw my hammer. That's a pretty good hammer. And I smash that sugar cube. I am now exposing more surface area. And since I'm exposing more surface area, there's more molecules that are going to be affected by the liquid, the solvent, and it'll dissolve faster. So if you increase the uh, surface area, you'll also increase the solution formation. So those are the three ways that you can affect solution formation very, very easily.